So what is going on everyone, Fernando Silva here with another video and today we're going to be talking about the Apple Trade-In program. I'm a big advocate of the Apple Trade-In program because I've been using it for a very very long time and in my opinion it's the best way to get new Apple products and then also kind of subsidize it right with your older Apple products. So without further ado, let's talk about the Trade-In program because like I said I really like it and I recommend anybody who's looking to get a new Apple product but has older Apple products to go through this route. So without further ado, let's check it out. So first let me paint you a picture and talk about the situation that I'm in, right? So I've had the 2018 iPad Pro just sitting over here, shout out Knoopsy with the awesome wallpaper, obviously. But I've had that 2018 iPad Pro, not since it came out, but a few months after that. So almost three years, I want to say maybe two, two and a half years I've had that iPad Pro. And it's been amazing, right? There's been zero issues with it from a power standpoint, performance standpoint, it's been awesome. Zero hiccups, screen is amazing, speakers are great. And to this day, that 2018 iPad Pro is my recommendation for anybody trying to get into the iPad Pro space, right? I don't really recommend the new one quite yet, not until WWDC, but that's a totally different video. But for me, I did wanna pick up the 2021 iPad Pro, but again, it's $1,100, right, for the base model. So what I did is actually went through the trade-in process. So just to walk you through the trade-in process itself, the reason I like Apple's trade-in process is because it's super easy, it's pretty fair for the money that they give you depending on the Apple product that you're trading in, and it's just very secure and safe. Like you feel like you're willing to take a cut on how much money you're gonna get on your trade-in device because of how easy and simple and your peace of mind is there when it comes to the trade-in program with Apple. But let's actually walk through how to set up a trade-in. So go to the Apple website, find the product that you want, I'm gonna walk you guys through with the iPad Pro because we're in this channel, right? So let's say we wanna get a new iPad Pro, whatever, fully loaded to the max, and then right before you check out, you actually go through the trade-in process, right? There's a little section that says, do you wanna trade in an eligible device? You click yes, and then it walks you through how to find out which device you have, right? Depending on where you're doing it from, it's a lot easier when you're using the actual device you're gonna trade in because that way you can just use a serial number, but that's all it really asks, right? It's gonna ask you a couple questions. It asks you for the serial number of the device, which is, you know, you gotta have that and actually to trade it in because Apple needs to know if it's a real device or not. And then it's gonna ask you some simple questions like, you know, is it in good shape? Does the chassis have any swelling? Are you gonna include the charger? Pretty much just some simple things to let you know or let Apple know that the device is still in good working condition. So after that whole process, it, Apple spits out a number of what they're gonna give you. I think I got around $530, $550 for my 2018 iPad Pro. And again, I have the 256 model, 12.9 inch, no data. So that's the model that I went with. And I think back then it was $1,100. That was a starting price. It might've been 1,200 back then, but I digress. So once you have the trade-in process all set up, right? And you have the offer that Apple gives you and you agree to that offer and then you agree to the subtotal, you then go to check out, right? And here's where it gets a little bit tricky and there's a way to actually make sure that you beat the system and then you come out, come out on top with this, right? So the first thing is they give you two options when you're ready to check out. You can either pay in full or pay monthly. If you pay in full, they're gonna deduct you know, the total amount of money from the purchase. So let's say the, the product is $1,100 iPad Pro, or in this case, a fully loaded one is like $2,350. If I wanna go and pay in full, I have to give them that $2,350 up front, and then once I trade in, once they receive the iPad Pro that I'm trading in, then they'll deduct that money back and kinda give me that $530 back, and then whatever the difference is, that's what's on the credit card. But if you wanna pay monthly, you gotta get yourself one of these guys, right? The Apple card. I, I use it pretty much only for Apple products because aside from the 3% cashback, there isn't too much of an amazing in terms of perks and things like that for a credit card. But this is what I use at the Apple store, right? Because if you want to, you can pay in monthly installments and even before you physically give the old device back to them, they'll deduct that total amount. So for instance, if you want to pay over 12 months, they'll deduct that 530 from the $2,300 or whatever it was and then divide that by 12 and that is your monthly payment. So if you want to go and pay monthly, you need to have this card and then on top of that, you kind of come out on top because like I said, they'll deduct the money earlier as opposed to after they receive the product. So I always decide to go pay monthly just because it's better for me and I don't have to ante up all that money up front. So I just thought I'd give you guys a little bit of a insight, a little tips and tricks when it comes to that. So now you decided you're either gonna pay in full or pay monthly, whatever the case may be, and now you're gonna get your device, right? So the way that it works is the moment you get your order device, right? So even if it's on pre-order, this is the rule, right? So once you get your ordered device, so in this case, a new iPad Pro, you have 14 days from that moment to trade in your older device. So I'm actually technically still inside that window. That's why I have my 12.9 inch 2018 iPad Pro right here. And then 
the, the 2021 right here. So I have until I believe Friday to send this one in and then kind of that's all she wrote. But again, that's where the beauty comes in. Like for instance, I, I still to this day don't think that this iPad Pro, the new M1 iPad Pro, is that much better where I need to hold on to this one versus the 2018 iPad Pro. But if WWDC wasn't coming around and I'm not, and I wasn't doing this YouTube channel, then I'd probably stick with the 2018 iPad Pro. But I am going to go with the 2021 iPad Pro, the M1, just because I need to be, I need to be able to have it and need to see what's going on with the new iPad OS on the M1 processor. So I'm gonna hold on to it. But again, for you, if you're within those 14 days and you decide, hey, my 2018 iPad Pro is perfect, this new M1 is really not worth it to me, you can just return the M1, they cancel your trade-in, and it's as if nothing happened, right? So that's why I love the Apple trade-in program. It gives you two weeks to play with the newer tech for, to let you compare it to the older tech that you're trading in and see if it's worth it and let you make a real educated decision on whether or not you wanna take that product and pay for that product. So like I said, if I really wanted to, I could say, hey, Apple, I don't want this M1 iPad Pro. Let me return it. They take everything off my credit card and then I still hold on to my iPad Pro, the 2018 one. And like I said, it's as if nothing happened. I just got to play with the M1 iPad Pro for two weeks. But like I said, for me, I'm gonna keep the M1. So the next thing you have to do, if you do actually wanna trade in your older device, you're gonna have to factory reset it, right? Get rid of all the screen protectors. So I have a paper-like screen protector on there. I have a D-brand skin on there that I gotta take off and I'll show you guys B-roll of you know, me taking it all off because I haven't taken off that paper-like screen protector in over a year. So <laughs> that's crazy. But again, so you gotta remove any, you know, auxiliary devices that you have with it or any auxiliary accessories that you have attached to iPad Pro. And then you go into your settings, go into erase all content and data, factory reset it, make sure you log out of your iCloud before doing that because I've had an issue where I've traded something in before and then they had to send it back, I had to factory reset it like all over again and log out of my iCloud and then send it back again. So if you don't want your money to stay in limbo, make sure you factory reset it and do it correctly. I'll leave a link down below if you guys wanna go through Apple's instruction process of how to actually do that. But just make sure you factory reset it because if not, they're gonna send you the device back and it's gonna put your money in kind of like a limbo until they receive the factory reset device correctly. And then the way you actually return it is Apple sends you a trading kit, which is super easy to use. All you have to do is you open it up, you print out the label that they send you for free, you put the label on it and send it to a FedEx or go to a FedEx. You can either get it pick up from your place or if you wanna go, send it to a FedEx and you wanna physically go there, you go to a FedEx and then that's it. That's pretty much the entire trade-in process from beginning to end. And the reason I like it is because it gives you flexibility, right? I get to play with the older device, compare it to the newer device, see if it's worth it, and that's exactly what happened with the 2020 iPad Pro. I ordered the 2020 iPad Pro, decided that my 2018, for the most part, was perfect. I didn't need to replace it with the 2020 iPad Pro, so I ended up returning that 2020 iPad Pro because again, I didn't need it, but I still got to play with it. I still got to compare it to my other iPad. I still got to decide and make that educated decision of, hey, I really don't need this right now. But now again, I'm keeping the M1 Mac because I do want to test it. I want to make sure that iPadOS 15 has the best device possible for it to run on. And that's what this M1 is going to be, hopefully. But again, that's a subject for a different video that we're going to be talking on really, really soon. But that's pretty much going to do it for this video, everybody. Like I said, give the Apple trade-in program a try. They accept like very, very old devices. Like I have a 2013 MacBook Air 11 inch that's been sitting in this drawer and I put in the serial number just to see if they would give me any money back. They would give me $220 back for a eight, nine year old MacBook Air with like 120 gigs of storage, four gigs of RAM that literally gets no use. So look at all the stuff that you have around you, see if it works, see if you can trade it in and get some sort of value from Apple directly. And then some last minute caveats, right? You cannot use the trade-in program when you go through the refurbished store. So you can't trade in an old device for a refurbished device. You cannot trade in more than one device at a time. So if you wanna, let's say you have like three old iPads that you wanna trade in for the iPad Pro. No, 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 no. They only let you trade in one iPad for that new iPad. You can though trade in the other two iPads for gift cards and then put that gift card towards the purchase. But for direct trade-in, you can only do one device at a time. And then the trade-in process still works if you're in the education program. So if you wanna get $100 off through the education program, still do the trade-in, then that's another way for you guys to save money through the Apple Store directly. And again, I like to keep it all within Apple because it's the safest way, it's the fastest way, customer service is awesome, either through iMessage or over the phone. Like whenever I have a question, they're quick to answer. So overall, that's why I like keeping it in the Apple ecosystem. I thought about selling it on Swampa for an extra 100 bucks or something like that, but it's really not worth it to me. But like I said, that's pretty much gonna do it for this video. Shout out to Paperlike for sponsoring the channel. As always, if you guys are picking up a new iPad Pro, highly recommend protecting that screen because that's gonna give you the best resale value if you do wanna sell it, especially outside of Apple. Because I know that I could probably get like 700 bucks, 750 for this iPad Pro, but again, I'm going through Apple because of the fact that I just 
It's a peace of mind thing. That's what it's worth to me. But again, check out Paperlike. Make sure your resale value on the iPad Pro stays as high as possible. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe because we've got a new iPad OS 15 video in the works that it should be releasing a couple days after this video. And then WWDC is right around the corner. So if you guys want all the iPad OS 15 coverage that you can imagine, definitely subscribe to the channel. And then also be on the lookout for a live stream when iPad OS 15 comes out because we're gonna live stream and kind of demo the software in real time and kind of play with it with you guys watching with your suggestions and things like that. But if you made it to the end of the video, comment down below that you guys are legends. Just comment the word legend because if you guys made it to the end of the video, that's what you guys are. But until next time,